Hey guys, Think Fishy here, and welcome to episode 5 of the Starting Class series, where I'm taking each of the starting classes through the game, sticking to the same equipment classes as the starting gear, and seeing how powerful I can make them. And it's time for my favourite class, the Bandit. And immediately there's a bit of a problem. Because if you take the essence of the Bandit and turn everything up to 11, you just get my parry build. That build remains exactly how I would optimise the Bandit class for maximum power and fun. So instead of making that same build again, I thought I'd add in a little silliness by combining two of my favourite builds I've made on this channel. Going for a Dragon Maw build with the Buckler and the Misericord. To get started, I didn't follow my standard setup guide because this is a Bandit build and there's only one way to start one of them. Obviously you don't have to fight Margit straight out of the gate, but he's one of my favourite bosses in the game and most of the time I kill him in 10 seconds, so I wanted to have a little bit of a scrap with him. Killing him first though does give us access to one of our main weapons for the run. At this point or before, follow my standard setup guide for all of the upgrade materials. You need both the Sombers and Smithings for this one. Run through Stormvale, dodging all of the arrows perfectly, until you get to the lift side chamber. Then back across the courtyard and into the room with the grafted scion, through the Stone Sword Key Gate to grab the Misery Cord. We're going to want a bleed infusion for this, so now to the Outer's Plateau to kill this Scarab for the Blood Blade Ash of War. Yeah, that's not a lot of damage. On second thought, maybe we'll come back for this one. Head to Lena's Rise in Kaled and jump onto the side of the bridge to quit out in front of this hole in the wall. The Knight's Cavalry will usually jump at you as soon as you spawn in, but be ready to quickly quit out if he doesn't. Now to Fort Farrah to kill the Sleepy Dragon with the Bleed Grease and the Morning Star, using a foul foot just after the final hit. Back to the round table to buy all of the smithing stones you need to level the Misericord to plus 16. Now to the Church of Pilgrimage in Weeping, to jump down the cliffs to the south for the Faith Tier. The Faith Tier will give us 26 Faith right from the start, meaning we can use the Spell version of Golden Vow, which we can grab from the hut west of the Bridge of Iniquity Grace. Then to Fort Farrath to ride round the castle and pick up Flame Grant Me Strength. With an upgraded weapon, we can now safely go back to grab Bloodblade. Now jump off the Saint's Bridge in Limgrave to head into the High Road Cave for the Blue Dancer Charm. Then to get our seal, we head back to the start of the game into the Stranded Graveyard. You can use the runes from the setup to buy two Stone Sword keys to access this dungeon. Left at the bottom, and then all the way up to the Banished Knight in the room at the end. You can cheese him with the chariot if you like, but this is a parry run. For our other source of damage on this build, to the Cathedral of Dragon Communion in Kaled for my favourite incantation. Dragon Maw. To buff this spell, I went into the Celia Crystal Tunnel for the Faithful's Canvas Talisman. If you wanted to, you could do the first part of Millicent's questline for the more powerful version of this. But to be brutally honest, at no point on this run will you feel underpowered with the lesser version. To finish our setup, ride southwest from the Ball Prawn Shack for the Dex tier. 
and to any of the rises for an extra memory stone. So here's the build. Before each fight, we cast Golden Vow, then Flame Grant Me Strength. Unequipping the chest piece will bring us below 15 equip load, which is the penultimate stage for the Blue Dancer Charms boost. You can have a little bit more damage than me for the whole run by getting fully naked, but I wanted to keep at least some of the prisoner's fashion. So I made this build with two strats in mind. The first, for non parable enemies like Godric, is using Dragon Maul's ridiculous posture damage to stagger enemies, giving me an opportunity for a massive repost from the Misericord. The third Dragon Maul in Phase 2 will stagger Godric for that massive crit. Oh, he's dead. At this point, once again, I'm going straight for Radar, but feel free to clear out Raya Lucaria for some extra Vega levels if you're less experienced in the game. So Radan's posture is always a little bit messy poise-wise. Technically, he should stagger after three Dragon Moors, but won't if he has Hyper Armor at that moment. If you don't get the stagger in Phase 1, you'll certainly get it on the first attack in Phase 2. Alright, I'm starting to notice a little problem with this staggering them with Dragon Maw idea. After Radan, you can head to the Walking Mausoleum in Weeping to duplicate Radan's remembrance for some extra runes. Now to Volcano Manor for Noble. As I wanted to try the other strategy I had in mind for this build. Parry with the Buckler, repost with the Misericord, then use Dragon Maw in their recovery for some serious damage. Right, so I've made a build for two specific strategies, and it's utterly shit at both of them. Instead, I tried something else. Standard parry strats for the first part of the fight, but after the second repost, hide behind the pillar. Run through the rest of the manor, past the stone sword key gate, and drop down to grab the dagger talisman, then continue down for the somber seven on the ledge. Head back to the round table to get the third talisman pouch from Enya and level your seal to plus nine. And once again, to the Lux ruins and Altus to bully the demi human queen for the ritual sword talisman. For any of the Tree Sentinel enemies, using Dragon Maw after a successful parry is completely safe, as it will stun them out of their next attack. You can use this to absolutely destroy them, or switch to the Misericord for some bleed props. I haven't shown this in a while, but if you ever want some extra levels around the capital, you can bully the Erdtree avatar in the avenue for the Lord Rune. For Godfrey, walk in and bait out that jump attack to get in a Dragon Maw as he lands. Then just use the Misericord for quick attacks between all of his combos. The damage here isn't monstrous, but the dagger is so fast that you're never really in much danger of getting hit if you're careful.
Now it's time for Morgoth, and this will definitely be one of the tougher fights on this run, as neither of my scuff strategies are going to work on a boss as fast as him. Once again, there's a link in the description for the smithing stones you need to pick up in the mountaintops for the Misericord. For Fire Giant, this is such a good setup. Dragon Maw does absolutely silly damage in Phase 1, meaning it won't last very long. By casting just before the hand lands in phase 2, we can get a stagger to open up a misericord repost. Finally, one of these strats is starting to work. Now because we're actually getting some repost opportunities now, head back to Limgrave and down into the crater, all the way down through Nokron to grab the black wet blade from the night sacred ground. An occult infusion on the Miseri cord sacrifices the bleed in favour of much higher repost damage due to the arcane scaling. Run through Farum all the way to Duo. Two Dragon Moors will stagger for a big crit. Alternatively, if you fancy a scrap, this is probably my favourite setup for a duo parry fight. Head back to the round table, buying everything you need to max out the dagger. Then grab the final Somber to max up the seal. Do remember to go to the blacksmith and upgrade the seal. I never forget because I'm really good at this game, but some people forget to go level it up. Run into the beast fight and wait for that slow dragging sweep to get in a dragon maw behind him. Then plays super aggressively so his posture never recovers. And for Malika? Now for Gideon, and this is going to be a massacre. Oh fuck. Alright, rewind a little. So that we don't have to fight Gideon, head to the Frenzy Tower in Leonia for the Howl of Shabriri. It's interesting this little section of the video, isn't it? 
People who've never seen my videos before are thinking, ah, Howl of Shariri, interesting. While regular viewers are just thinking, what level's that seal, fishy? Howl of Shabriri is something you can use earlier in the run if you like. It gives you a little extra damage in exchange for taking more yourself. I'm going to use it for the rest of the run, but feel free to stick with Flame Grant Me Strength for some extra safety. For Godfrey, the same as the Shade, bait out that jump attack for an early Dragon Maul, then get stuck in and don't let his posture recover. And for Horalu, As I correctly assumed that Radder Beast would be a little hairy on this build, I headed to Castle Soul for Commander Nile. One shot the summons with either of the weapons. Then just wait for that big tornado attack. Ride through the snowfields all the way to Aldena Town, then south to cheese the invader and head through the teleporter into Mogwin's palace. Because Moog is really weak to bleed, we want to head back to the blacksmith to swap out the infusion. Oh fuck's sake! And because our dex tier isn't really doing much, to Eleonora in Altus to grab the purifying tier. Moog is a joke on this build, as either of our weapons will utterly trivialise him. Killing him before knee hill is definitely possible with Dragon Maul, and managing your FP correctly. But even if you don't, this fight is over very soon after it starts. For Plassey, both of these weapons work great. You can keep procking bleed at every opportunity with the Misery Cord and run to the back for Dragon Moors during those long breath attacks. Something that I tend to avoid doing on this fight is this strat. When he disappears to start the laser beam attack, if you run to any of the sides of the arena and dodge his flying attack, you end up behind him for the whole of the lasers giving you 20 seconds to attack him in safety. This is a really powerful strat, but it does effectively skip the coolest part of the fight, so use sparingly. For Radagon, you can get a completely scripted fight a bunch of different ways with Dragon Maul. I started off going for the stagger, then taking the crit with the Misery Cord. One more Dragon Maw after that triple slam attack is all you need after that. And the spell is insanely good for Elden Beast. If you don't want to deal with dodging Elden Stars, this is another build where you don't have to. Just hide in that repose animation instead.
for Loretta, parries into Dragonmoor for a very easy fight. And finally, Melania. And there's a choice here. Buckler and Bleed Misericord is my favourite setup for fighting her. But you can also just bully her with nothing but Dragon Ball. However, I started thinking back to that second approach that started this run, but never worked for any of the bosses. Would it work on Melania? Three parries, into a repost, then Dragon Maw in the recovery. And that's it, how to make a very silly bandit build. If you try this build, please let me know how you get on in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.